Here we are with our first operations on the motor mount. I'm drilling a hole so I can place a bolt to hold it down. Um, I'm taking a very short peck because I don't want this to end up. Uh, this was a previous drilling cycle I did. I think it was like a quarter inch peck, but it ended up with that huge bird's nest uh, wrapping around the drill. So, Although you're not supposed to peck carbide, I hear, um, this, this way actually works out pretty well, so I'm not I'm entirely concerned with it. All in all, uh, this this old motor it does not do too bad in aluminum. Um, unfortunately, mine would only reach a maximum RPM of 3,300. I'm not sure why. It's just one of those quirky things with the driver. But at 3,300 RPM, it it's it doesn't do too bad. Um, I wasn't overly concerned with it stalling in aluminum. Uh, that is until I uh, got to using the face mill. It, it didn't stall, but it has stalled on me in the past. So uh, I was I was kind of nervous about that. But um, just with these kind of smaller end mills, uh, seemed to work okay. I was getting some chatter, but you know. Also, uh, when I was cutting this plate, the mill was out of tram. It was leaning forward in the y-axis uh, by about seven thousandths over six inches and that kind of caused uh, a lot of problems uh, later on that I discovered. You know when you think about it, um, that I, I noticed that uh, whenever cutting in the y-axis, um, the, the amount of chatter seemed to increase. And that, that sort of makes sense because when the end mill is traveling in the x-axis, uh, being out of tram in the y-axis doesn't really affect the cut. Um, but when it's traveling in the y-axis, uh, you always have one leading or trailing edge of the end mill that's sort of gouging a concave uh, cut into the surface of the material and I imagine that can certainly lead to some chatter issues. So we've finished up this operation which was uh, milling out the pockets for the C-face of the new motor. Um, if you see there I had to hold it down. I, I didn't have a bolt short enough uh, so I had to hold it down with a socket. I think it was like a three quarter inch socket or something like that just to uh, act as a spacer. It was a little bit nervous for me uh, having it stick up that far, but I verified my cam uh, tool paths and everything and uh, nothing was going to hit it, so it worked out fine.
so uh, when I switched to the 8th inch carbide end mill I was uh, super concerned with breaking it uh, so I probably went much more conservatively than I should have but I was just worried about uh, chips building up in those holes and not being able to clear out properly it worked fine and I probably could have gone a lot faster So here I got a little bit bold and I decided to go more aggressive with the profiling uh, roughing cut and I did a, a depth of cut of 0.2 inches which was double what I had been doing uh, up to this point. It cut okay but um, I could tell it was definitely under some strain and I was getting uh, some chatter and also I was losing uh, coolant pressure and it wasn't clearing the chips properly uh, and that was mainly just because the chips were clogging the drain down below so I ended up coming up with something better basically a little flower seed from Kroger uh, to catch all the chips and I can just empty those out periodically but the benefit is it holds the chips but it allows the coolant to flow through them and if it gets full, the, the coolant will just flow over top, so it doesn't really inhibit uh, coolant getting back down into the tank. Uh, very, very worthwhile $4 upgrade. Here is an occasion where I had to pause the program. As you can see, the coolant has just been reduced to nothing, and I was getting a lot of chips uh, building up in that slot. Here we are with the face mill. This was the first time that I noticed that uh, the machine was really out of tram, um, just given the way that the face mill was cutting. It, it was uh, always cutting no matter what even if I didn't change anything in the Z direction and that's because the, the, the side closest to me as I'm standing in front of the mill was cutting deeper than the side furthest away from me and uh, that was leading to a lot of problems uh, we have a completely obscured view here but I kept it in there anyway just so you could hear the spindle kind of struggling uh, with making this cut I think the maximum amount of material we're removing as far as width is cut here is uh, about an inch and a half uh, and at 7,000 but was a fairly aggressive cut for this spindle. I've stalled this spindle before cutting aluminum at uh, 3 inches or almost 100% width of cut and uh, 5 thousandths deep in aluminum. Nothing much to say here, the chamfering operation uh, worked out very well.
I really don't remember why I paused the program here. Um, at first I thought it was because the coolant wasn't flowing, but it's flowing fine, and I turned it off. Uh, but nevertheless, it's an opportunity to sort of better see what is going on behind all that coolant. This is a bit of an interesting cut. Um, I wanted to put some uh, sort of large 45 degree chamfers on the outside here. Uh, chamfers that were wider than the actual chamfer mill. So I ended up kind of stepping the cut in the cam program. Uh, I used Rhino Cam 2.0 and that worked very well. Um, in fact, I think you might be able to uh, uh, do a very large chamfer uh, by using this method, but all I'm doing is stepping the uh, 45 degree chamfer mill um, up and over on each successive cut, so it's sort of just following its own 45 degree uh, contour. This is uh, just cutting out the center hole in the mount, so the, uh, uh, I think it's a two or two and a half inch pulley, I can't remember the diameter, uh, can fit through. I uh, clamped the uh, main body of the mount and I bolted that center piece in there so we don't have anything flying off and breaking my only uh, aluminum cutting end mill that I have.
there was a few other issues that I ran into, and that was uh, some of the dimensions were off in the y-axis, and I couldn't attribute that to being at a tram. So uh, after I finished making the mount, I went back and I did some measurements, and it turned out my y-axis motor wasn't exactly uh, calibrated just right. It was a little bit under, a little bit over, I can't remember. So. Uh, in fact, I think it was a little bit under, so everything was sort of squashed smaller than it was supposed to be in the y-axis. Uh, it wasn't a huge deal, but uh, it was only off uh, a few thousandths or so, but it was enough for me to notice when I was trying to put bolts and stuff together. This here, I'm just uh, flattening the side that I accidentally made, and uh, when I canned it, I actually made it uh, uh, like an arc instead of a straight line. All in all, everything turned out very well. Uh, the uh, spindle motor didn't stall, and, uh, but I wouldn't expect it to in aluminum at 3300 RPM. Here it is with the uh, 3 8 inch socket head cap screws. Uh, there it is bolted to the C face of the motor, and there's kind of the top of it. Stay tuned for part two.